hello Aries I hope you guys are doing wonderful this is gonna be love readings for August let me cover up my my grays on the side there I still got some peeping out but anyway I had somebody ask me to do some love readings um, this month and I was like sure I have some extra time why not let's go ahead and do it so this is gonna be a little quickie about love for Aries for August. Let's see what spirit has for you. All right. Oh, attraction calling in your soulmate. This could be the one. And then the soulmate card. What the heck? What the heck? What the heck? Interesting. Let's see what we got. Get it, get what? Get it, get it. Some of y'all are going to be getting married. How exciting. I haven't seen marriage in any other sign yet. But for some of y'all, definitely it's on the table. So here's the thing. Some of you have been praying, hoping, wishing, doing the, the love dance. Get the, 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 the bring me love. The, 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 the bring me love. Y'all know how y'all do it. Do the, the booty pop twerk. Okay. So some of y'all, y'all been doing it. And love is coming. The universe has heard you. They are bringing in your soulmate. And y'all are like, this is it. This is the one for me. I'm attracted to this person. They seem to be attracted to me. You know, let's get it on and popping. I've been praying for this. And for some of y'all, this, this, this growth is going to be magical. There's some karmic bumps for some, not all. Some of y'all, you've already dealt with some issues and you're, you've healed and this person is coming in healed and y'all are fast tracking it to the marriage part. Not saying it's perfect. There's no such thing as a perfect relationship, but it is showing for some of y'all definitely fast tracking it to something that feels really, really good. That has the possibility of moving to a deeper commitment, whether this is moving in together or actually marriage, saying I do. So for some of you, congratulations. Now, for a few of you, you've been praying for the soulmate. You met somebody that you're attracted to. You feel the chemistry with this person, but then they ghost you. And you're like, what the hell? What happened? I thought we were cool. I thought everything was good. I like them. They like me. They had a nice booty. I got a nice booty. What, 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 what? For some of you, you're dealing with somebody who's just not ready. They're not ready. They're uncommitted. Um, they initially like the high of making that connection with you. But for some of them, they want to keep their options open. And I think that's the big misconception with a lot of people when it comes to soulmates. A lot of people feel like when you meet the soulmate, that it's supposed to be a forever love thing. And we're going to be together forever. We have hundreds of soulmates and not all of them are going to be romantic soulmates. So even though you feel a connection with somebody, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a romantic love connection. Bye, babe. Be safe. So for some of you, there's definitely connecting with somebody and you feeling the vibes and then they ghost you and you're like what happened and you can't find them and it's because they're keeping their options open now of course that's not the right way for, to do people but unfortunately in 2018 this is what we do we ghost so for some of you the person if they come back and I do feel for a few of you that you are going to be the soulmate. It's going to be really, really good at first and then they're going to disappear. And then a month, two months later, they pop back into the picture and you're like, what you want? And they're like, I really, I really liked you. I did. But you know, you, you just did things that were a little bit different than me. You know, maybe you were into that witchcraft stuff or, you know, maybe you, 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 you prayed to Jesus or, or or whatever it was, it just didn't mesh with me. So I had to pull back a little bit. And then, you know, the money situation wasn't right. You know, you didn't know how to balance your checkbook. Every time I asked you for $5, you say you didn't have it. You always had me taking you out. Whatever it is, you could deal, be dealing with somebody who's a little bit narcissistic where it's like, okay, you did not fit into my bubble. Now, not and I'm not gonna call I, I keep hearing narcissistic, but not everybody's gonna be narcissistic. For some people, you just don't. There's the initial connection, but then they realize that there is no other connection that you have, that you are different than what they are. 
So for some of these people, it's just going to be like, we don't mesh. We don't. We can be friends and we can friend zone each other, but we cannot be romantic because you're not what I'm looking for. For some of you, I feel like you're definitely going to be dealing with a narcissistic person. They're going to be, you know, well, I wanted you to have a flat belly or I wanted you to have blonde hair or, you know, it would have worked out with me and you if, you know, you dropped 10, 15 pounds, but I just didn't see that happening. So I decided to move forward, but they came back. Their dumb asses came back. Why did they come back? Soulmate connection. They still feel that connection with you. Doesn't mean it's a healthy, it's a healthy connection though. Be really, really mindful of that. Not every soulmate connection is a healthy connection. If you have somebody that you meet this month that makes you feel special and then they start putting you down and they're trying to change you or whatever, they're narcissistic, they're not looking out for your best interest, they're looking out for theirs. So you might want to back up with that. Some of you, you're going to go ahead and try to pursue it and then think, what, what's wrong with me? You know, I don't know what's wrong with me. This person is never happy. It's not you. It's the person. They're not happy and they're going to put you down because of that. Be really careful. And I see for some of you, you you're going to walk away. You're going to walk away and not want to entertain this. So be really, really careful. Also, be careful if you have anybody coming back into your life that's just like, I need to borrow money. You know, I can't pay my rent or I got a new apartment. I don't have furniture. I don't have dishes. Can you help me out? Be really, really um, careful because I feel like for some of you, you got somebody that's coming back and manipulating situations because they feel like they can, especially when it comes to sex and finances. Be really, really careful with that. Now, for some of you, you want to believe the hype. You know, well, you know, maybe I do need to lose 10 pounds or yeah, you know, you do need new furniture in your apartment and I can help you with that because I'm going to be sleeping over there. So I want us to be comfortable. <sighs> be careful. If your name is not on the lease, I wouldn't put furniture in there. Me personally. If my name is not on the lease, I don't need to be contributing to something that is not going to be mine that I got to split up with you later. So if you got a used couch or you got something that you want to let them borrow or you want to give to them, then that's cool. But don't go out and spend your money for something that at the end of a year, you're going to have to fight this person for because it's their apartment. There's stuff in the apartment. Be careful with that. Some of y'all are going to get, well, they're going to try to play you. I'm not going to say you're going to get played, but you're going to have some people that try to play you. Now, for a few of you, I definitely feel like you're connecting with a soulmate, but there are bumps in the roads. Like, you know, there could be differences of opinions. There could be little minor arguments, nitpicking back and forth, but you don't feel like it's bad enough to walk away. You feel like there's potential with somebody and with some people, it is potential because it is showing that you are going to be moving towards a commitment. So the little bumps in the road where there are arguments, you know, you didn't clean the kitchen. You didn't take the trash out. Things that irritate you, but they're not deal breakers. Those things can be fixed and that relationship has potential. I do feel for some of you, you're dealing with somebody who's very, very playful. Now, this could border on immature. You could be dealing with somebody who is just too much of a prankster or they play way too much for their age. And it's frustrating for you. If that's the case, check them. You know, I love you to death, but... I hate when you do this, you know, you're always, I need you sometimes to be mature, to be grown, to, to act like you got some sense, because I do feel like you're dealing with somebody that they're an adult, but they have the mentality of a teenager and you're constantly having to go back in and be like, uh, you know, come on, come on. Now for some of you, I feel like you're dealing with somebody who could be a little bit overboard in a playful thing. But for a few of you, I feel like you're a stick in the mud. Like you're with a partner who wants to go do things. Let's go dance. Let's go uh, zip lining. Let's take a trip to Vegas. And you're like, no, you know, I just want to Netflix and eat salsa and chips. And they're like, ah, uh. okay. If this is you, you got to open up your playful side. Or you may end up losing this person because of that. Because I feel like this could be somebody trying to give you a chance. They're waiting to see your fun factor come out. They're waiting to see things open up. So this month, if you feel like you're a little bit too restricted, 
you know, no, I don't do that in the bedroom. No, that's not me. Girl, guy, break out the toys. Put some spice, add some fun, do something a little bit different. Remind this person why you're in their life. It doesn't have to be outrageous or anything like that, but I do feel that there needs to be something that keeps this connection growing. And you need to keep it moving forward. If you get stagnant or start getting into a routine, I feel like it's going to be drug out. And for some of you, you know, this is happening right after you marry this person. It's almost like you do all your makeup and everything before. And then after you marry the person, it's like, okay, you don't even put lipstick or lip gloss on anymore. So for some of you, you are going to connect with a soulmate, but you need to keep it moving. You need to keep it spicy. You need to keep it going. All right, you guys. Now for those with the manipulating narcissistic person, I'm not going to tell you to walk away. You got to figure that lesson out for yourself. But I will say protect your money. Protect your self-esteem. If somebody's putting you down and they're making you feel less than who you really are, be mindful of that because that could really, really damage you and affect you with future relationships and make it harder for you to move forward, okay? So love you guys. Mwah.